There are a lot of reasons why humans are driven to exploration. There's just a natural curiousness about why we exist. I feel a sense of connectedness to nature when I'm swimming in the wild. There's this beautiful silence that allows me to brainstorm and work through really challenging problems. When you're alone in a large body of water, you can appreciate how insignificant you are in the grand scheme of the entire planet or the universe. My journey to studying astrophysics is not as romantic as I would like it to be. I think I deliberately chose the hardest thing to study, more as this challenge. When I was quite young, uh, we, we moved around quite a bit, and I think innately that created more of an openness to, to new ideas and new things. I feel like since moving to Finland, every day is a new adventure for my family. Um, we do a lot of activities outdoors, I think, which is really important to us. What excites me about living in Finland is the fact that it's incredibly close to nature, that there's this uh, environmental consciousness that is just innate. You can just integrate that into your daily life, which means a lot to me. There was this new amazing opportunity out of the blue of a company based in Helsinki using amazing new technology. I left astrophysics where my whole world was around being on the top of these massive mountains looking out to space. But looking at Earth and examining with fine detail what is going on on Earth is a much harder problem. What ISI does is allow us to observe in extreme detail the changes on Earth. It's a satellite in space with this radar sensor. And kind of like a bat, they receive back this echo and it allows them to paint this two-dimensional scene of space. Well, the, the radar sensor is doing the same thing. As our constellation grows, we have tremendous revisit around the Earth so we can continuously observe everywhere and understand the changing dynamics on the Earth's surface. So SAR, Synthetic Aperture Radar, is a game changer because it can be used day or night and it can also look through clouds and smoke and haze so we can continuously observe how the Earth is changing and how things are changing on the Earth. We have a meteorological forecasting team who's tracking events and understanding where the biggest events are going to happen and where they're going to impact. As soon as a flood event happens, within 24 hours, we provide a high resolution and high accuracy depth and extent map to government agencies and insurers. Looking at the rapid disaster response and mobilization and bringing in resources to help people rebuild a community after a big event. And then after that, as the event continues and evolves, we will update that information. The more information that these communities are given more quickly, uh, the faster they're able to respond and react. There's a tremendous amount of future possibilities with this technology. The fact that we're able, from space, to persistently observe how the Earth is changing is tremendously powerful. There's a huge number of questions that we can start asking and, um, and answering. And I think we've only started tapping into that. Precisely detecting and delivering the impact of a catastrophic event means that individuals can recover quickly. That is a powerful application. And so my hope for my children and future generations is that we have enough insights to continue to persist the love of nature and the ability to enjoy it without the fear as the climate changes and the sea levels rise.